Okay, so did an install on my boat. I have a Pro Line uh, 25 walk around, and initially my radio was up there. But as you can see, my mount broke. So looking around and decided I was going to do something a little different. So I went with the JBL PRV 175. I had a CD player, but I realized pretty quick that I don't ever use CDs on the boat. Um, so I bought it. I have uh, four JBL uh, MS 6510. They're six and a half inch uh, speakers. And then I got uh, Inrock USB auxiliary. Inter, uh, interface which I installed up here and that way you can plug your auxiliary or your, your, uh, your USB plug in there and then I have a uh, Inrock wireless antenna because my other antenna used to be up here so the new antenna is behind the console and then finally I use some kicker uh, KW 1620 speaker wire which is a marine grade type speaker wire um, for, uh, for everything. One of the big reasons I decided to go with JBL was because I didn't want to try to fish my speaker wires through my hardtop down to uh, I've got four, there's two here and then of course the two in the back And then I also went ahead and added a little base to it. So I've got a Kenwood subwoofer and amp, which I will uh, give you the part numbers and everything for those. Installation was pretty easy for the uh, for the radio itself. Um, I had my boat repowered last year with a uh, Evinrude E-Tech and Prior to the install, I had uh, just two regular gauges here, uh, attack and speed, and it's the smart gauges for, I had a Mercury. Um, well, the Evinrude actually just has really one gauge that controls everything, and um, I also had a... Uh, the neutral and uh, RPM switch installed. So uh, I had a, basically an, an extra hole and the JBL mounts in that hole. All your uh, wiring is is marked. Um, I solder all my connections so uh, you know that way you don't have to worry about uh, you know those crimp things coming apart. So it's, it's all real Real simple, any basic uh, audio installation, you know, it would be the same. There is an optional remote control, which I, I didn't install um, or buy. And then the uh, this is where your auxiliary and USB plug plug in. The cord is really long, which is way down there in that tangle of mess. But uh, you just plug that in, drill a hole right there. And put your uh, your USB and auxiliary port, and then I had also installed a uh, uh, charging port for my phone or you know whatever USB devices I have. So that's uh, that's right next to it. But that's that's completely separate and different from the radio. But anyway, so that goes there. Uh, the radio antenna, like I was saying, it's, it's just right here, and it's a flexible antenna. So, uh, you know, it's just, I actually uh, fished it around and it comes up right, right there. You can see the little wire. That's the antenna wire. Gets good reception. Um, yeah, I don't know how far offshore we'll get reception, but uh, it is what it is. Now with the JBL, um, I have it hooked up to my accessory switch. And there's a, there's a plug on there for accessory switch. And then power it on. Um, 
turn it off because of the YouTube audio licensing stuff. But anyway, there's the uh, the radio, Bluetooth, and of course your auxiliary, um, and then all your uh, radio controls. You got your volume, bass, treble, balance, fade, and your equalizer. You can change. Um, and beeping. So uh, that's pretty much it. And then we can toggle through the uh, got the different equalizer settings: flat, classical, pop, rock, and then off. Kind of would just leave it on rock. So that's pretty much it. Um, you can preset radio stations, which I hadn't really messed with. Uh, the cool part about it is, is although you know, when you shut your power off, um, it doesn't lose your radio stations or your last settings. So although it just plugs into your accessory when you power it off, accessory it powers the radio off it doesn't actually lose anything so uh, that's pretty much it like I said that that installation is pretty straightforward um, I just run all new speaker wires to my four speakers my new JBL speakers and then I ran the uh, to in rock kit I'll have all the part numbers and stuff up here so I have those up there and uh, it works great sounds great uh, great connection to the Bluetooth. Now, if you get more than 15 feet or so away from your your uh, the receiver with your whatever Bluetooth device you're connecting, it, it does drop it or it you know fades in and out. But my boat's only 25 foot long, so unless I'm in the water, I, I should have a good connection. If I'm in the water with the phone, then that's a whole other problem anyway. So. But uh, there you go, that's the JBL PRV-175, and uh, uh, mounts in a 3.5 inch standard tack size, tack diameter hole, and um, sounds great, a whole lot better than having to run wires, so if you don't need a, if you don't need a CD player, and you're uh, happy with the, uh, just the Bluetooth connection, Spotify or Pandora or something, then that's the way to go, I think. The subwoofer I ended up going with is the Kenwood PWD 250 MRW. It's a marine rated uh, subwoofer. It's a 200 watt amplifier and then a 10 inch free air um, subwoofer. Sorry if you can't see that, but I'll have the specs and stuff at the end. Okay, well, I'm not going to take all this apart for obvious reasons because it's a pain in the butt to put back together. But this is where I mounted my uh, it's a 10 inch subwoofer from uh, Kenwood. And then, if you're able to see, there is where I mounted the amplifier. Uh, again, it's pretty basic audio uh, installation stuff. You got a power wire, a ground wire, and a remote wire, and then of course you have the two um, subwoofer speaker outputs. So, uh, Cutting a hole, of course, is pretty nerve-wracking. Anytime you cut a hole in a expensive boat, even though it's on the interior, it kind of gives you the pucker factor. But uh, they give you a template. You cut the hole out. Um, I mounted the amplifier uh, brackets, and I just ran two screws from the top down with uh, nuts on the back of it, so it uh, 
so everything's kind of out of sight, out of mind. I don't have to worry about where the where everything's at. It's all it's all right here. So this is the uh, the Kenwood subwoofer and the amplifier, and that's where I mounted. One thing I forgot to mention that is worth mentioning is there is no uh, it's called a subwoofer gain control on the sub and there is no way other than the, uh, the base level to control the uh, amount of output from the subwoofer. Uh, I have noticed that with some, some music I'm having to turn the uh, the bass down really low at the at the radio because otherwise the the bass is overpowering. Um, I guess I would look for a, maybe a subwoofer that had a uh, a subwoofer control or a head unit that would be able to control it. But like I said, I've only noticed it with a few with a few songs where there's a whole lot of, whole lot of bass in the song. So if you're a somebody who likes so there's a lot of bass in it. Um, something you may want to consider. So uh, that's it. That's my install on the JBL PRV175 and the Kenwood 10-inch uh, subwoofer and amp with uh, four new speakers. So uh, thanks for watching. We'll have some more installations and and stuff coming soon.